going to record this, all right? And this is going to be a little bit of a deeper discussion into GameStop and kind of what's going on here, right? So you guys answered for me what kind of daily candle on GME. It's a doji. It's a doji, it's a doji, it's a doji, it's a doji, it's always a doji, it's always been a doji, it's always going to be a fucking doji, it's a doji. It's just a doji, God damn it! it's a doji. One of my most viral videos that I ever created was a GameStop update video where I did nine seconds, I opened the chart, and I screamed, it's a doji. Because I wish I was joking, but GameStop is the number one stock at just fucking dojifying. Right? This thing is dojified. Right? So, what's a doji? Right? Small wick on the bottom, small wick on the top, and a little body in the middle. That's a doji. GameStop does this religiously. That's one, and 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 that, and that, and you get the idea, right? Jesus Christ, Jackie, shut up. So what do these doji signify, right? They signify indecision. Okay, now when we were seeing them down here, I don't know that it necessarily signified indecision so much as it just signified that there were very few buyers and very few sellers on specific days at specific prices within a range, right? So we knew that somebody was likely keeping it within this range either to accumulate to distribute and push us back down or accumulate to push this stock higher. And these dojis that we saw down here help signify the lows and help us find and time entries at the lows, which we then used to make a bunch of money. Fantastic, right? Great. So what does a doji at a top signify, right? What's what's a doji at the top signify? Well, normally dojis at the tops, right? These are scary because they come in at the ends of trends or they normally signal the tops of trends, right? Now, people will hear me say that and they're going to say, Jackie, you're doing that thing where you're being bearish and you're doing... Wait. GameStop, while dojis have historically shown that there is some level of concern, right? The thing that's interesting, right? Now, you have seen lots of people on Twitter and lots of people all over the price. uh, (laughs) I said price. All over the place. Talk about this May price action back here, right? And when you look at the May price action back here, you'll notice that you had a huge candle followed by an inside bar, followed by an inside bar, followed by an inside bar, followed by a breakout of that range of those inside bars, followed by a fake out and come back to retest that breakout zone, right? And in the midst of those inside bars was a massive doji. Is it a doji? If you want me to be super honest, I would say no, because the body's huge, right? But the wicks are cool and the candle. This one, this is a doji. And this one, this is a doji. But if we were using the replay tool, well, when we were trading this live, that kind of looks scary. Right? Sure, 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 sure. It it could have been a bull flag. Sure, 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 sure. Sure, sure. It could have been. But this is GameStop we're talking about. Folks, this is GameStop. GameStop never goes up. It can't be a bull flag. Every time it's a bull flag, it dies and we get fucking bag hold again and we fucking lose all our money again. Right? And it's a doji at the top of a trend. So shouldn't this signal the end of it? Well. Not so much. Okay? So these dojis, all right, When I see them happening, okay, when I see them happening within a trending move, okay, 
it is reason to have some level of concern. There is reasonable, uh, you have reasonable expectations to be concerned when you do see these. However, when we see this coming off of a trending move, and not just a trending move, but for GameStop, a, a widely outsized move from what we are typical, typically used to on GameStop, right? That was 62.5% from that low to that peak of that move. And then you had three inside bars and two of them being dojis, right? So because it was so unique, we looked at this doji and we said, hey, this is kind of signaling some indecision, but perhaps on the short side. Because longs are very clearly continuing to hold this up here, right? With force, right? And lots of volume was coming in. If we use the replay tool again, you'll see that the volume during this period of time was significantly greater than what we had been seeing, right? Significantly greater than what we had been seeing right? And because we were seeing this, even during these doji ranges, the volume was continuing to remain exceptionally high, right? 24.3, 24.7 million shares, right? So very high. And that added a level of, you know, like confluence and excitement to folks that when we saw these dojis, we kind of said that might be short questioning. They might be saying, dude, do we want to fucking cover here? Or do we really want to try and push this down? Because this could, this could turn into trouble. Because I can personally promise you, right, that there were fucking idiots on Twitter screaming GameStop to five. Here, 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 here. Right? All the way through. Everybody's screaming GameStop to five. Right? Jackie says 10 and everybody loses their fucking minds. But these guys say five and everybody fucking cheer them on anyways. These people took short positions that started here and 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 here. So when price goes up to here, pretty much every single person that was short on GME within the last full calendar year was red. And not just a little red, but a lot red. And that was a problem. That was a big problem. And then that's where they had to ask themselves, do we want to cover here? Or are we going to try and short this thing from these peaks? Well, the IV started cracking, so you knew that they were going to try and sell covered calls. You knew dudes like Colin Gladman and all those fucking guys were coming on Twitter, right? And they're like, GameStop will never go this much higher, and it'll never go there, and I'm going to sell covered calls, I'm going to make all this IV premium, and <laughs> And those were the guys that were fuel for the rocket. Right? So let's go back to where we currently are now and let's talk about what's happening here. Right? So on the daily, let's turn off all the drawings. We get too excited during the day trade sessions. You know, it's just, it gives a crack. We look at the daily Bollinger Bands. We look at all of the moving averages. And on the daily time frame, all I see is us above every single one. I see the Bollinger Bands continuing to bulge, even though we are at the top side of them, and we did escape them, but lo and behold, the last two days, we're back inside and continuing to ride the upper side of those Bollinger Bands. That's very positive. And that doji, what's interesting about the price action that we have here is you made a high, then a wicked into a higher high, and then today we also wicked into a higher high. Barely. Six cents higher, but it's higher. To me, it's signaling that there is thirst. There is thirst for price at this level. And the reason that it just barely is wicking into these highs is because somebody is desperately, desperately guarding $28. They are desperately guarding $28. And why are they desperately guarding $28? Because of one of the most important things that we have consistently talked about here, about the liquidity on this chart post squeeze, right? Which is our visible range volume profile. I got to delete an indicator here. And when we look at the visible range volume profile, 
right? We've already determined that the final node of liquidity essentially lies just above where that price is. And I promise you, this, this is, listen, write this down in your book. Write this down in your books. Write this down on a piece of paper. Write it on Twitter. Write it wherever you want. I'll be the first to put this out in public so everybody can see this because I know what will happen. Okay? If GameStop, right, if GameStop breaks $29, it will go to the moon. Whether the moon is $40 for you, whether it's $50, anything after $50, I, I make no promises. But if you break $29, this will go to the moon. And the reason I know that is because the final nodes of liquidity lie right in this range. And it's the reason that these motherfuckers are so desperate to defend this range. Because they know the same way that I know, the same way that you guys know, now, if this breaks 29, people will start to FOMO into this thing. Not only will they FOMO into this thing, but then shorts will capitulate. If you don't know what capitulates means, let me make it simple. They will start to cover their bullshit bets that they took here and 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 all the way back because Price is going to be breaking one of the single most important ranges. And let me explain how I know this. Once again, I'm going to zoom out all the way back until when the cat squeeze happen. Okay. I want you to look at this. Okay. I want you to note the VRVP. Okay. Look at the visible range volume profile. This thing is flat out screaming at us that if you break this range, people begin to FOMO on GameStop. And we have seen it several times on this chart. And the craziest part about all this, <coughs> excuse me, is that GameStop consolidates above its macro point of control post squeeze at 2583 consolidation on heavy volume above the most important liquidity zone on this entire chart dude this is like the end of happy gilmore spoiler alert it's like the end of happy gilmore when the tower falls over and, and and he's he's like no you gotta you gotta play it as it lies play it as it lies and then happy looks up and down the tower and does the thing and he's like nah I think I'll just make it and win it right now we're at that scene in the movie You've, you've taken the putt. It's in the tower. Now, unlike the movie, will it find its way out and lose? Or will we have the fairy tale ending? And it pops out. Boom. <laughs> And, and that's that's where we are. All, listen. All it takes at this stage. All it takes at this stage. Is one buying event. One big short seller to capitulate. One big dog to say, nope. If I'm the first to cover, I'm going to get out of this for cheaper than everybody else. So I better do it now. 
And those are the same questions that these candlestick formations on this chart tell us. There is fear and concern that should GameStop break the single most important area on the chart, that this thing will do something stupid. And here's the best part, right? Because this is the problem that everybody forgets, right? Imagine you're one of these dumbass short sellers. And in the back of your mind, you know Nice. That's cool that it just doesn't give you the first guy, hey? You know that this guy right here, arm sling and all, you know, by the way, if you know, you know, you know that this guy is sitting there waiting. Like the boogeyman, right? And if that dude is sitting there like the boogeyman, if you're a short seller and price is right at the singular most important resistance on that chart, all it takes is one cat tweet, one event that you did not plan for, and you are roasted because you will gap up 50 100 percent shorts will have to capitulate because they're gonna be fucked and then the price will go stupid and the last to exit the door is gonna be holding the bag But look at where you are on this chart. Let me zoom out for you one more time. And let me do something that I do for all of my... I don't want to call them students because you guys are all just friends. But let me pull this VRVP indicator off, okay? Let me turn the drawings back on. It's a total fucking mess, right? Let me just try and see if I can hide some of this so it's less... In your face. <laughs> okay. Let me draw a box. All right. Let me take a rectangular box. I'm going to place it around 29 and 28. Now, I want it to be a little bit bigger so you can see it. So, I'll just place it around 27. I'm going to drag it all the way across. I'm going to bold it the fuck up so you guys can see it. So you have no questions about it. That's what you guys see in yellow here. Okay. Do you guys see post sneeze? How unbelievably important this level has been. It has been the very thing that provided support back here on this earnings gap down. It was the very thing that provided the resistance in this range that pushed us lower. It was the very range that once we broke out and came back, the very range that once again provided resistance until we broke through it, and then it was nothing but support, support, support. And that helped us during this period of time for a huge run on GameStop. And then it completely broke down after making the horns pattern. And went into the base phase. And during the base phase, you broke resistance with a wick one time. And then that box acted as nothing but a resistance point and a rejection point. Not just for this base and period of time during October and November of 2022. It was also the earnings gap up resistance in March of 2023. 
It was the Ryan Cohen purchase resistance back in June of 2023. And then once we went fucking buck nasty, it has now once again turned into the resistance that it was back during this period of time. The question becomes now, is the company in a better position? Yes. Is the company financially stronger? Yes. Are there a similar number of shareholders compared to this period of time? In fact, there is likely more. Yes. And is there a certain cat that lurks in the shadows? Yes. Those statements culminate into a single question. Can we break this box? Can we take this resistance and burst through it? Because a break of this resistance right here, in my opinion, is the singular thing that will send GameStop into a fucking frenzy. And this is where, and I'm going to circle this all around now, this is where the FOMO comes into play. Beyond the cat coming in, you have all of the fucking regard crowd that wants to buy the shit out of this thing. Because they always think Moas tomorrow. And perhaps a bip on this stock through that range, once and for all, is the very bip that triggers Moaz. And we have talked about this many times before, so let me make sure before people get all fucking crackhead. Ryan is going to dilute the stock again. The higher the share price goes, the more concern you need to have about locking in options profit. Not only that, but from a logical perspective, the higher the GameStop goes, the more money that GameStop puts into their pockets that allows GameStop to strengthen its business and allow it to survive, but not just survive, thrive, and opens up doors of opportunity. This, this is it, guys. Uh, on, on a weekly chart with all the drawings turned off, just analyzing the chart post sneeze with the visible range volume profile on, we are above the points of control. We are stable above the points of control as the weekly Bollinger Bands begin to bulge. Not just that, but I'm going to show you guys something that is going to get you mega fucking hype. And I rarely ever do this. I rarely do this. Now, this is a lesson that if you are in the Discord and have taken moving averages lessons, this will make sense. If you haven't, just listen. I will ask the chat box one simple question. One simple question for the chat box. Looking at this image with no drawings turned on. What did the daily 50 do to the weekly lower Bollinger Band? The 50 is in blue. The lower Bollinger Band is in bright blue. What did the 50 period moving average do to the lower Bollinger Band? Okay, perfect. Great answers. It crossed. Exactly. 
the Bollinger Band on the lower side went underneath after being above the 50. Okay? Now, I want you to look at this. I'm going to turn off the 200 so that you guys can make sure that you see this good and clear. I'll even turn off the center line so that we can make this easy. Okay. Oh, what did I just turn off? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Chat, looking at the stock post sneeze. One question. Okay, one question. Has the lower Bollinger Band ever been above the weekly 50 and then gone below and having the 50 cross through it? Has it ever happened on this chart that you see on your screen in front of you? Is there ever a moment in time that you guys see on the screen where that has happened? There you go. Somebody picked it up. There you go. Back here. Now, I want you to remember something. This is after the sneeze. Weekly Bollinger Band above the weekly 50. It breaks below. Okay? Breaks, 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 right? From the initial break right here, GameStop went up. 47%. Okay, so you see that there was a pretty significant move that occurred on GameStop, right? Okay. So we just noticed that. Now I'm going to ask again. Other than that one period of time, during the squeeze, or after the sneeze, excuse me, has there been any other moments? I'm going to answer for you because I'm tired of playing games. No. No. There hasn't been. Other than that one that led to a 47% swing on GME, no. This is the first one post-sneeze, excluding this silliness. Now, the reason I wanted to share this with you was not just for this example, because this was a poor cross. The bands were never bulging when this cross occurred, unlike this one that's currently taking place. Now, I'm going to do something, chat, and I want you to pay very close attention, please. Did it ever happen prior to the sneeze? I am zoomed in on the sneeze's price action. Did it ever happen prior to the sneeze? The answer is no. There was no weekly lower Bollinger Band cross with the 50. This just occurred. Okay? But don't get your hopes down yet. Don't get your hopes down yet. Okay? Don't get your hopes down yet. Because this is where I'm going to start showing you some other things. Let's go to the daily. Okay. On the daily, now let's turn on the center line of the Bollinger Band. Let's turn this back on. There it is. Okay. The center line of the Bollinger Band has crossed up and through the 50 period moving average. Both of those, as that has occurred, are sloping up. I will ask the chat box once again. Has the orange line, okay? Actually, let's let's go back here a bit. <laughs> Shit, I gave it away. Okay. I have two VRVPs. Whoops. Prior to GameStop having the cat sneeze or the cat squeeze, whatever you want to refer to it as. You had your daily center line on the Bollinger Band slice through the 50 period moving average as both of them sloped up. And then as price reverted back to the mean, both of them 
continued to slope in an upward direction, which allowed us to remain bullish and take advantage of this secondary move that occurred on GME. This was a different type of moving average cross that occurred on the chart that led to very significant and bullish moves on the chart. Okay? This is one type of Bollinger Band cross. And you can see that when this is sloping up and this is sloping up, it had led to directionally very bullish trades on GME. I promise I'm going to circle this all around for you guys here, okay? This is one type of Bollinger Band cross. And the reason that this is bullish is because both of them were sloping up during a period of time in which the Bollinger Bands were excessively bulging away. Okay? Are you listening? Right? Now listen carefully. Looking at the center line of the Bollinger Band and looking at the 50 period moving average on the weekly. What direction are they both currently sloped? Which direction are they both currently sloped? Fantastic. They are sloping upwards. Wonderful chat. Now, the Bollinger Band center line just started, but that don't matter because the 50 has been nice and smooth for several months now. So this is good, right? Now, let me ask you guys a question. Is a Bollinger Band bulge bullish or bearish when it's happening and price is in the upper half of the Bollinger Bands? When you have a bulge begin to take place and price is in the upper half of the band, is that bullish or is it bearish? Okay, fantastic. Exactly. It's bullish. That's exactly right. So not only do you have both of your moving averages sloping upwards, your Bollinger Bands are then bulging, but then you have a very unique type of cross. This is a different type of Bollinger Band cross where the band itself bulges and you have a moving average cross that bulging band in an upward sloping fashion. Okay? This type of cross on the Bollinger Bands generally signals that there will be some upside activity because the bands are bulging away from one another. Your 50 period moving average has crossed through that moving band, which by the way is a it is basically a type of moving average. So you have not one cross, right? But then both of your ball, uh, both of your moving averages in the center line of the Bollinger Band and your 50 period moving average, both sloping up as those bands bulge away. Jesus Christ, there's so many B words to fucking say. Those Bollinger Bands bulge away from one another, which in and of itself is already a bullish event, right? It's all to say that all of these events taking place are signaling that the move wants to be directionally bullish. Okay? Now, I'm going to open up the daily. We're going to turn on the 200 period moving average here for a second. And I'm going to explain how we kind of saw what was going to happen with GME back during here and explaining some of these Bollinger Band bulges in relationship to how they work with moving averages, okay? So this video is a little bit longer, and I apologize. I didn't think that it was going to go on this long, but I want you guys to like kind of see this, right? If we zoom in on GME, okay? The 200 period moving average, the 200 period moving average is in yellow. I have taken the 50 period moving average off, okay? The 200 period moving average is in yellow, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you guys a series of questions, so just give these answers as quickly as you can so I can just rip through this, right? 
Are we outside or inside of the Bollinger Bands on these three candles that my cursor is looking at right here on uh, May 3rd, May 6th, and May 7th? Are we outside or inside of the Bollinger Bands? Outside. Fantastic. So that means that when you're outside of the Bollinger Bands and 95% of all price action stays inside of them, the expectation is, is that price will try to either stabilize, consolidate, or look for a mean reversion towards the center line of the Bollinger Band. Now, we didn't go to the center line. We printed doji, doji, doji. Now, on top of those dojis, I want you to notice something with me. Okay? First, in this range of price action right here, okay, from this two large candles and this consolidation... What were the Bollinger Bands doing? It starts with a B word. What were the Bollinger Bands doing during that period of time, starting with the B? Exactly. Thank you, Chad. Bulging. That's exactly right. Because the Bollinger Bands are separating from one another. That's a, that's a bulge, right? So those bands are separating from one another. They are continuing to separate from one another. Even as price had three days of consolidation, three days, and they still bulged away from one another, signaling that the trend should remain bullish. Now, the final piece to my puzzle. If I turn off the candlesticks on the chart, What happened right here, chat? What happened right here? What is that? That is the Bollinger Band bulging as it slices above the 200 period moving average on the daily. And as that occurred, the bands continued to bulge, continued to bulge. This is like a pseudo golden cross. Did you know that? Did you know that the upper Bollinger Band breaking the 200 period moving average is similar to a golden cross? Did you know that? Not only is it similar to a golden cross, but your Bollinger Bands bulged during that cross, signaling that there was already bullish momentum and strength happening during that period of time. Final question. What was the center line of the Bollinger Band doing as that cross occurred? Not just what was the center line doing, but what did our 200 period moving average start to do? Huh? After years, after years of doing nothing but going down, 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 right as that bulge occurred, as it broke the 200 period moving average, your center line of the Bollinger Band began to explode upwards and your 200 period moving average for the first time in three years began to slope up and when those things occurred it was a signal that shit was gonna pop the fuck off and guess what happened it popped the fuck off and you want to know the last time that you had a bulge where you were in the upper part of the bands and it crossed the daily 200 and your center line was sloping up? You have to go back years to have a 200 period moving average sloping up when these things occur. Oh, but wait, 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 how far back? Oh, what happened here? Is that the upper Bollinger Band breaking the daily 200? Is that a bulge 
that occurs slightly after it right here? And is that the 200-period moving average beginning to slope up as those things begin to occur? Oh, that's weird. Because I could have swore that that exact same thing happened right here. And that kicked off the short sneeze. And now, right, here's where things kind of get even more exciting. Look at what you have here on the daily. You have a Bollinger Band daily bulge crossing the 200 with both moving averages sloping up. Dog. It does not get more bullish. It doesn't. And you continue to ride the upper side of this band. And the band, let me ask chat, right? Because Jackie's a grifter and all this kind of other shit, right? Let me just ask the chat box. I'll just ask you guys point blank, right? Let me hide the drawings here and everything so you can see this organically. Chat. Are the Bollinger Bands still bulging? Yes or no? Are the Bollinger Bands on the daily still bulging as we rest upon these highs? Yes or no? Exactly. Yes. The lower band is still expanding. The upper band is still expanding. That is a bulge. And during this bulge, you have one of the most consequential Bollinger Band bulge crosses that you can have on a chart. Look at what happened here. When you had this little micro bulge, it was kind of shitty, right? But you still caught a fucking cool move. And like I said, the last time that you saw something like this, look it. You were above it. You break through it on a cross. And look at the move that occurs. Do you think it's coincidence that I keep timing these GME moves? Or do you think I kind of know what I'm doing? And what I see here does not make me concerned even in the slightest. You have a Bollinger Band still bulging. You have both moving averages sloping straight vertically. Look at your 50 period if I add that in there too. This is again all on the daily time frame. They're all sloping up. All of them. With a bulge. Dude. That, that doesn't get any rarer. It, there's no rarer event than this right here on your screen. All three important moving averages sloping up during a Bollinger Band bulge. As price rides the top side of it like fucking... Oh, dude, this is probably the cat's tweet. I get it now. I, I get it. I get the worm thing. I get the worm thing. I get it. Am I allowed to play this? I think I can play this. Even if I post this on YouTube, it's probably fine, right? Ooh, maybe not. I don't know, actually. That's a good question. Oh, he got... Okay, so yeah. So, you know, he like rides the worm and shit, right? I think that's kind of what we're doing. You know, I... I chat, I, I think that's kind of what we're doing. You know? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 right, and he, here, thump, 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 <laughs> ride the wave, baby, you know, but folks, 
Don't listen to these fucking, don't listen to these crash outs on fucking YouTube and Twitter. Except me. <laughs> but don't, don't listen to these fucking guys, man. I see you guys in the comments saying something about that Pantano guy again. Y'all really going to make me pull the tweet where he said, this play, it's over. Since he said that, GME has gone up 38%. Stop it. You, you, you don't fucking need anybody else. I, <laughs> the cat and I got you. Watch us ride the worm. Look at it. It even looks like a fucking worm. You want me to draw it? Look at this. I, listen, I'm shit at drawing, but. Listen, it's the sandworm. <laughs> Listen, Al Kaib. <laughs> <laughs>